I'm going to try to master these five skill toys in five days. Skill toys are objects that require manipulation and dexterity to properly use, and some people can do some insane things with them. And apparently, there's even health benefits of using these. Right now, I think this is how hard each of them will be, but there's only one way to find out. First up, the butterfly knife. I've previously learned some basic moves like the Y2K and the full 12, so I want to try something completely different called the whip rollover. It consists of three parts, rolling over the index finger, then doing a flip that twists it around, and in the same motion, rolling it around the thumb. Which instantly felt so much harder than the previous moves. Ah, oh. So I decided to focus on each part individually, until I could cleanly do them separately. But when I tried stitching it all together, it still looked terrible. I knew I could get it eventually, but first, my brain needed a break from spinning a fake knife. Okay, this is gonna be hard. I bought this kendama years ago, but it's basically just been collecting dust because I was so bad at it. So it's time to change that. So I quickly learned the basic spike, which made me realize that using your legs is vital, seeing as they let you create smooth and controlled motion to keep the whole of the ball where you need it. Oh, it's like a hundred teeny tiny squats. Uh. But then I had to force my chicken legs to power through and learn the Ken flip, which flicks the ball up, spins the whole handle and catches the ball to reset, which was hard. So I needed to keep practicing. And apparently it will be worth pushing through the pain because playing with challenging skill toys comes with a load of real world benefits like improved hand-eye coordination because they require precise movements, enhanced cognitive function because the brain has to learn new patterns and sequences which can boost memory and problem solving, improved focus and attention abilities because they require direct concentration and so much more. And so with that in mind, after committing to trying, I figured out that you have to start the handle spin at the same time as the ball flick, whilst at the same time getting momentum from your legs, and eventually... No way! Yes! Come on! <laughs> Come on! Actually, that was way easier than I expected. Okay, this is beglery. It works kind of like butterfly knives do, and because I already know a little bit about them, I'm thinking this should be easy. First, I learned the thumb rollover, which is almost exactly the same as on the butterfly knife. But then I wanted to learn a ladder, which is where you spin the beglery around each finger from bottom to top. Sounds simple enough. Beglery skill toys originated in Greece, and they're based on worry beads, or komboloi, from ancient Greek culture. In the 1900s, beglery was super popular among shepherds passing time, and they were apparently used for stress relief and relaxation, which is hilarious, because they angered me to my core. Oh, I hate these things so much. So after trying every day and becoming pretty sure I wasn't going to be able to do it, by day three, I had to have a rest from them and move on to fingerboarding. Because I want to try skateboarding, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to break myself instantly. So I'm going to start with this cute little guy first. My goal is to cleanly ollie up onto a foot high surface because apparently an ollie is actually really hard on these. And when I first tried it, Okay, yep, that's actually harder than I thought. It is basically the same technique as a real life ollie, except your brain hasn't trained your fingers to spring like your legs do when you jump. But I watched a tutorial and apparently practicing on your leg is the way to go to get used to moving with the board in the air. So I did that for literally half an hour and then tried it all again on a flat surface. Yes, I actually got some air. So I kept practicing, eventually getting a little bit higher and a little bit higher and a little bit higher until... Yes! Come on! Next skill! I still had to get back to my nightmare, the beglery, and had to smoothly complete the butterfly knife challenge. But first up... This is a pen, and you lot have asked me to learn pen spinning about a thousand times. So I quickly learned some basics, like the thumb rollover, again. But I wanted a real challenge, which is when I realized there is an entire huge subculture around pen spinning, with some genuinely ridiculous moves. I wanted to learn the double charge, because it looks kind of cool, and it can be done non-stop in a loop. But after wrapping my head around how it actually worked, and then struggling to recreate it with my pen and lanky fingers, I decided I needed an upgrade. This is a practice pen, specifically for pen spinning tricks. And this practice pen made it so much easier to learn. The bigger size is actually really helpful. It gives it better momentum and it also makes it easier to see when I'm messing up, like if I'm hitting my fingers. I practiced every chance I got, even when I was just zoning out on the sofa. And even though I kept slapping my fingers and messing up, eventually it started clicking in my brain and muscle memory started doing its thing until... 
Okay, it actually looks sick. Okay, I've nailed my challenges for the kendama, the fingerboard, and now pen spinning. So it's time to get the butterfly knife, but first, my nightmare. Memory. After not picking it up for a couple of days, surprisingly, it was still ridiculously hard. But it turns out that when you're learning skill toys and other skills too, your brain is kicked into full throttle. It takes a while, kind of like a baby babbling, to try to figure out how to properly speak. But it encourages neuroplasticity in the brain as it adapts and reorganizes neural pathways. Lots of different areas of the brain are activated and neurotransmitters that regulate mood are even released, which leads to some of those long lasting benefits, but also means that you've just got to kind of trust the process and let your brain do its thing over time. And after spinning it over and over again, smacking my ankles and launching it across the room, I finally started to get a feel for it. Oh, that was so close. I realized that there's a pattern to the motion and your hand kind of works with the weight of the beads. And also tilting my hand back slightly seemed to get me closer. And eventually this happened. <gasps> oh, yes, come on, yes. But honestly, I have no idea how those shepherds found it relaxing at all. So now after struggling through that painful experience, I knew it was only a matter of practice and letting my brain figure out what it needs to do and change at a neurological level. Which is when I realized that the butterfly knife whip rollover relies completely on the wrist being the lead movement that rotates smoothly and it acts as the glue between each part. And once I had it figured out, I nailed that too. Yes, come on, that's all five done, yes. So next, I just need to level up. Fingerboards translate to real skateboards, right? If you like this video, I reckon you'll like this one too.